mission. Cancer prevention is on the mind of many, many people today. In fact, a recent survey found that if you ask women today what are they most concerned about, it isn't heart disease, which after all is still going to kill one out of two women, it is breast cancer. And so the facts are that the number of women dying of breast cancer is a small, tiny fraction. But it is very important to know that you live in a day and time in which we have poisoned our planet. And Everyone has somebody at home that has some problem, either mental health, obsessive compulsive, or Parkinson's, or Alzheimer's, or multiple sclerosis, autism. And across the board, preventing cancer is rather important to us since in some countries, death from cancer is now higher than the number of people dying of heart disease. Since I've been lucky enough to develop the Beyond Chelation Improved, working with Dr. Lester Morrison and proving that we could eliminate heart attacks and strokes using this simple, very sophisticated product called BCI, I now have the pleasure of working in cancer prevention. The first slide that I'm showing you is a very, very important connection for everyone, because this gentleman has spent a couple of years going around the world and recording with a great high precision, high density, high definition form of videotaping every cancer clinic that has a worldwide reputation, whether it's in Mexico or it's in Germany, Switzerland, and in America. So for joining this simple website, those of you who are already fighting cancer won't have to sit there and feel that you're settled for second best. If you have an idea that you need to be in Italy being treated, they'll have the Italian doctor that you can listen to him and see a clinic and see them talking to his patients. So whatever you believe is what you're drawn to, you can check it out. So I really want you to take the time to hit on some of these connections, and this talk, as all webinars, will be up on the GordonResearch.com website very soon so that you will be able to, at your leisure, go through these and utilize this information because it's exciting to know what success stories are out there. What are the various treatments? Is food the best approach? Who are the experts? What are the clinics? It's all there for you to learn. But today we're talking about prevention. So I think it's really important to understand that this report of the President's Cancer Panel for the first time really begins to admit that the problem is very much related to the unacceptable burden of cancer from environment and occupational exposures. This is why I'm so confident that all of you can do something now. This report shows you that we are suffering grievous harm from carcinogens and that all of this is largely swept under the carpet when they finally diagnose cancer on you. They just give you more poison. It's an amazing process. How can they know that any tumor that we take out of your body is loaded with carcinogens from PCBs and dioxins to lead and mercury and ignore it and simply treat you with another poison expecting to have a great outcome. Well, you're going to learn in today's presentation that there's a lot of change needed because people have not been told the truth. People who think they had cancer probably didn't even have cancer. Cancer is being incorrectly diagnosed. Mammograms are terrible and need to be stopped. They're causing cancer. You are going to learn in today's presentation 
that there is a need for change. And this is one of the key parts of it is for you to put one and one together and realize what are you doing to lower your level of toxins in your body. Now, admittedly, most of us aren't going to go down and write out a check for $4,900 and send our blood to Mount Sinai School of Medicine, but you don't need to because everyone who has done it has failed the test. And we'll get into how you know what your test would look like without even writing out a check for $4,900, and you can move into how are you going to lower your total body burden of these toxins which, by the way, have so impaired your immune system functioning that probably everyone listening to me today has infection, either fungal, bacterial, or viral. And we'll show you more about that because infections are now tied into this cancer story. But the good news is I will be showing you today the link to my friend in Japan who has proven a 99 percent protection against cancer. 99 percent of 20,000 patients didn't move on to needing cancer therapy for lump bump cancer because they followed a program. 99 percent success is unheard of in the elimination and prevention of cancer, but we are going to make sure today that you know how it was done, and it ties very much to this president cancer panel. This panel would, of course, not dare go further than what they did when they simply said, we have to wake up to the war on cancer and the harm from carcinogens. They didn't talk about the next step of what you can do, but we're talking today. So even though there's been a decrease in incidence and mortality, it is still shattering the lives of and 41% of Americans will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lives. And one out of five will die from cancer. <clears throat> so what can we do? Well, fortunately for you, I saved the CNN special on Toxic America on my website. So those of you who didn't watch it when Sanjay Gupta did the two separate one-hour specials, you will be able to watch and see how a town in Mossville in Mississippi has been proven to be bathed in vinyl chloride, which is like dioxins and which is causing an epidemic of cancer, which the government is totally unprepared to do anything about. They measure the level of these vinyl chloride in the people and the dioxins, and they say, yes, you've got three times the natural national level, and the families will tell you <clears throat> no one in their family ever died of cancer before, and now it's virtually an epidemic. Virtually everyone in their family is dying of some kind of cancer. So, so the truth is that across the country, whether you talk benzene or dioxins or mercury, lead, etc., we have a toxic country, and there is no place, even though this chart is only giving you <coughs> a rough idea about the lead. If you don't have lead in your state, believe me, you'll have other toxins, and we try to educate you. This very powerful 10 Americans video, if you choose to put in the word 10 Americans in Google, you will see in the top four or five hits, you will see a video that you click on in the next seven minutes you will start crying because it is actually 10 babies selected at random one morning across the United States. And instead of throwing the placenta into the trash bucket, we first collected the blood from the cord blood and we sent a check for $15,000 to a laboratory for each child and we found by testing 413 toxic chemicals, 287 were present, including industrial chemicals that have been banned for years. So this is going to be what you will find, but sadly, the children are six times the level that you have. So
So when I listen to a very great new radio program, anyone who has Sirius or XM satellite, please start listening to Sirius 114 or XM 119 and start listening to NYU, Langone Medical Center, to hear how sad the stories are because it's 24-7 answering questions by the heads of departments at a really first-class medical institution. And when you hear the calls of what comes in and what your fellow citizens are facing in the way of mental disease at home, cancer, degenerative disease, tumors, you, you will not believe how sick our country has become in terrible until you become an expert on nutrition and realize that we have somehow totally destroyed the food system of our country. When it was the Second World War, we had victory gardens and we raised the food ourselves. And you had healthy tomatoes that grew in your backyard or in your neighborhood that you shared a plot of land. Today we are in crisis mode. Please understand, autism is now one out of every hundred children. The increase in lung cancer in women is 600% in the last 10 years. Half of the women never have smoked and don't even live with a smoker. Please understand, we are in trouble, and I am here today to tell you you can do something. These are chemicals in every one of you. All of you would fail the test, unfortunately. The children, because they're growing rapidly like a tumor is growing fast, the tumor has six times the level of these poisons as we find in you. But you've had many more years for it to do damage. And the child has got a lot of things on its side. But no matter how you cut it, one out of four children going to school today in America has to see the school nurse for the treatment for their obsessive compulsive or their depression, or their brain tumor, or their diabetes, or their asthma, or their autism, it's not a happy picture. And remember how many of the children weren't born without help because the sperm count is so low that they've had to have fertility specialists assist them in the pregnancy. This is just a little note to let you know that this is a worldwide problem because in Spain we just had one man actually agree to go on a starvation diet until the hospital relented and decided that he deserved to receive detoxification for the poison in his mouth. And all of us carry these amalgam fillings which the ADA, the American Dental Association, and FDA have been really in cahoots on denying to the public the knowledge that an amalgam filling is 50% mercury, and it virtually never stops releasing mercury into your body. So every time you chew on all those silver, called silver amalgam fillings, they are mercury, and your intestine is being bathed in mercury unless you are lucky enough to get some of the EDTA gum, called Easy Defense, that Longevity Plus brings, because we can't all afford to get all of this out of our body. But this gentleman, by being willing to go on a hunger strike and refusing to leave the hospital, has led to a whole revolution in one country, but that will be hard to happen in our country, because we have so many vested interests who have to stay in the state of denial, pretending that there's nothing wrong with putting mercury in your mouth. But it's a law that when the dentist takes it out of your mouth, he will go to jail and pay a huge fine unless he takes that stuff he takes out of your mouth and puts it in a toxic dump site. So somehow it's safe as long as we keep that toxic dump in your mouth, but it is a heavy fine and lots of penalties if the dentist absolutely is dumb enough to let you spit that stuff into a spittoon and poison our water system. So it's okay in your body. 
So I have everyone on detoxification, and you'll learn much more about zeolite. And you have to understand that there are reasons that we have this epidemic of disease. One of the reasons is one you don't hear a lot about, infection. Yet, on my lecture on heart disease, I pointed out very clearly that Harvard Medical School agrees that virtually everyone we test in this country has got a virus called CMV. It's a part of the herpes family, cytomegalic virus. They now agree that it's not just coincidence that it's in your body. It's in the plaque in your arteries, and it's helping give you hypertension. So we now can state unequivocally that there is a parasite or a virus or a candida or bacterial infection, and it is absolutely now being tied into the whole cancer story. It's not just atherosclerosis. It's not just causing the Parkinson's and contributing to the autism and contributing across the board to Alzheimer's and all autoimmune diseases. The problem is cancer is right in there. And so it gets confusing for people. That's why I had to put together my FIGHT program because that stands for Food Infection Genetics. H was the heavy metals and the H is the hormones and T is the toxins because if you don't get the gluten out of your diet, if you're gluten sensitive, which about 40% of all people today are in quotes gluten sensitive, but that may only be because we have really poisoned our food supply so much with preservatives in the treatment of wheat that maybe everybody shouldn't be on wheat anymore, but it gets to be confusing but all of us need to meet an organic farmer. And we need to change our food intake because it's going to be hard to have you reach your maximum intended useful lifespan unless we have you learn how to control the infections. And I can't control the infections, although I've got a great silver product, ACS200, that will make all of these infections decide that you're not such a nice person to live with, and even hepatitis and AIDS have been provably showing the dramatic reduction in the titer, titer of any infection, and we now know that ACS Silver, the company supplying it, has been able to actually show by tweaking it a little bit, it will actually deal with anthrax spore. So I want to have it clear that there, none of you need to be frightened about this thing. It just ca increases the cost of staying alive because I put everybody on ACS Silver today, because no matter what is wrong with you, infection is contributing to it. And infections, your doctor's not even measuring these things. And when you talk about parasites, anybody who stays sick and does everything right, the odds are 95% that you have a parasite that no one ever accurately diagnosed because some parasites take more than one stool specimen and you can't have a stool test done in a little hospital. Often parasites have to be diagnosed by leading parasite experts who know what they are looking for. So we know that we're losing the war on cancer. But I'm going to tell you today we have a way to win it and that's food prevention. And you will see the numbers today making it very clear that when you contact and get interested in staying healthy before you have a lump or bump, remember all of us have cancer all the time, but when you're smart enough to get interested in prevention, you will not wind up with a lump or bump because it takes seven years for most cancers in the lung, breast, prostate, and throughout the body to become large enough for your doctor to diagnose them, they have to be around half an inch, about a little over one centimeter in size. So, are the new wonder drugs working? No, they're a ripoff. They're going to take this stupid Avastin, probably take away its approval because it is such a ripoff. But people have been spending all this money taking these stupid drugs. And why do I get so mad? Because the doctor, who doesn't understand how ridiculous this approach is to use these drugs, tells you, the patient, that if you have the audacity to talk to Dr. Gordon and take vitamin C, he will throw you out of his practice. That makes me very sad. 
because the vitamin C data is far better than the data on these substances that he's collecting, what, $50,000 in a year? And yet New York Times shows you barely even lived two weeks longer, but he's taken away your rights to think for yourself and to find ways out of the problem, to have at least, even if we can't cure every cancer, those of us who understand alternative cancer treatment care will always give you a better quality of life and a longer life than if you stayed with mainstream. So fortunately, many of you are thinking for yourself and walking away from mainstream, but because you're fearful and because mainstream is, in quotes, covered by insurance, so you might as well get your $50,000 worth of nonsense medicine because at least your fellow taxpayers are paying for it. So you're afraid to deny yourself because the white tower looks so impressive and that's where everybody sits and loses their hair and gets poisoned. It's not the best treatment. So how badly out of control is the system? Well, you are not going to believe what I'm showing you now. I'm going to wake you up to your, I have your chair, 90,000 women who were told they had interductal cancer or absolutely did not have it at all, but they went ahead and erroneously operated and gave them chemo and gave them radiation. Now that report came out in the Susan G. Komen report in 2006, and this is just another report in the July 19th New York Times. So what's going on here? Well, you're going to hear from Dr. Gordon right now that people having mammograms are being absolutely misled. I used to be in radiology. And when I was in radiology all the way back in 1964, they introduced to us thermography. And, of course, the x-ray department threw it out. They said, we can't have that. Of course, they never admitted that they have a conflict of interest because the radiologists in this country have to admit that one quarter of their income average across the United States for every radiologist comes from exposing your breasts to more radiation. And you're going to see that we have the data. And in future talks, I'll give you the data as to how much the rad accumulation of excessive exposure of breasts to Ionizing radiation is increasing the incidence of breast cancer, and will, and particularly some women who have some particular genetic defects are getting a massive increase every time. And the doctors are ordering CAT scans left and right like there's nothing to it. And every one of them is equivalent to 500 to 1,000 chest X-rays. Things are badly out of control, but I'm not that upset until you watch the next part of the story. What they do with that mammogram is not only increase your likelihood of getting cancer, they get you very frightened because they see something. But what they see generally turns out to be the one kind of breast cancer that virtually by itself would never kill you. It's a, it is the same rat race that we have done to men for quite a few years with their prostate. We frightened them with their PSA, made them get annual biopsy sticking a needle with their prostate, and it turns out that less than 12% of prostate cancers are actually going to ever affect your life. And it turns out the PSA test they were using on the men was really a test for prostatitis or infection. It wasn't even a test for prostate cancer. So women are in the same boat now. If you go and get a thermograph done, a hot spot in your breast has meaning. And we will show you how you can have blood tests done that will confirm then that there is something going on, and we'll show you how important that can be. So with 90,000 women having had the wrong diagnosis and having been told they have breast cancer, and they didn't, it gets to be very hard to know which treatment that some big drug company has got so-called proven is a valid treatment, because what, what am I concerned about? Well, they now admit that 20% of breast cancers seem to go away on their own. So if they tell you that their new treatment is great, how do we know it wasn't a bunch of cases that would have on their own gone away? And so you begin to see that there's a lot of problems. So this is what a tumor actually looks like in a breast or in a colon or actually in a prostate. 
This is in a colon, a real tumor. This is in a prostate. Now, what I want everybody to understand is that my suggestions to you have tremendous meaning if you should go to this website and see the most wonderful graphic ever put together to educate you to the fact that environmental signals are causing confusion and it, the problem ties to heart disease, cancer, and premature aging. So everything that I am talking to you about today is not just going to prevent cancer. It's also going to mean you live longer, you'll have less heart disease, and in fact, you will have less cancer. So there's a constant dynamic flux in your body is always responding to the environment. So we have to become aware that when you take a breath, you are absolutely provably taking in lead and mercury. And where did that lead and mercury come from? Why is it in your breath? Because we have to have our electric lights. And if you're in China, they are turning on so burning so much coal that provably 30% of the mercury in your body if you live on the West Coast is from a gift from China. And that takes radioisotope and it's all well documented. But this is to tie into your mind a really first class group. The Institute for Functional Medicine is a place you can find doctors who are thinking, who are breaking out of the mold and not lying to you, telling you that if you thought a shot of B12 helped you, that it's in your mind because these doctors know how to do the functional test, methylmalonic acid, and can show you that, in fact, even though your serum B12 was high, serum B12 high didn't mean anything but more likelihood that your body was getting the wrong kind of or couldn't use vitamin B12. So it takes the new doctors, and we have ACAM, we have the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. I've just been in a meeting this weekend with a brand new group of integrative medicine doctors. We have anti-aging doctors. There's doctors who are leaving the mold, but the bad news is when you leave the mold, the big computer in the sky sees that this doctor is no longer a good little doctor pushing drugs. He's a bad doctor. He's starting to think differently because they can tell from the bills they've received from doctors which doctors are starting to think differently from the tests they order. So more and more, those of us that are going to survive are going to be paying cash to the doctors who have chosen to break out of the mold. It's not nice to call a doctor and be told he doesn't accept your insurance payment, but at least I have to let you know that we are in a rapid state of flux, and the old medical model is dying, where you just give a drug and hide the symptoms and never treat the cause. That model is on its way out. So just to tell you you have a lump somewhere and to say we're going to operate and then we're going to give you radiation, with chemo, they have never done one thing to help you figure out what was I doing wrong. Well, I can tell you it's pretty obvious if you think about it. Those of us who have so much illness that we're already having hypertension, or we already have osteoporosis, or we have diabetes, or we have obesity, or we have disabling arthritis, and all these, these conditions are a pretty good hint that your body is not operating optimally. And I go back to the top of the page and I say everybody has cancer at all times. So here's a test to tell you how much cancer is in your body. CA profile. It's easy to find them. It's listed as caprofile.net when you choose to go on the website or you can call them and you'll find that they're doing tests that your doctor is not doing. And it's from proven success in that my doctor friends who have used this laboratory, this test can cost around $371 and it's not reimbursed. But the people who do this test have never been suddenly surprised when they feel bad and they go to a doctor and they're told, gee, you got here a little too late, your lung cancer is already in your liver, it's not attached to your body. I mean, we can tell you because if your HCG is going up, human chorionic gonadotropin, by the way, I use HCG homeopathically to help you lose weight and it's a miracle. But HCG is something that goes up when a lady is pregnant, but that is 
absolutely a telltale sign when they're out of the usual low ranges that your body is having more than its share of cancer growth. And so is the phosphohexoisomerase, which tells me that there's some parts of your body that anaerobic metabolism are going on. Anaerobic is what was shown by Warburg years ago to be the explanation for the cancer growth. And so when you have this, we need to know it because we can give you very specific support that will make these very early cancers, when these tests start to become elevated, it just doesn't mean that you're going to die of cancer the next year. It just says you have more than the level of cancer that we think is safe because we know we all have cancer, so we have safe ranges. But the TSH has got to be really looked at because at least 40% of Americans have been lied to when they have obesity or chronic fatigue and the doctor says, I tested your thyroid, it's fine. They didn't realize that the range for thyroid stimulating hormone has been brought down and down, down to the level now that it needs for many of us to be three or four. And the point is that they ignore these numbers and they wind up telling you you're perfectly fine when they're wrong and we could have significantly changed much of your life with these things. And DHEA goes down as you age and it's available in our country without prescriptions. So you'll learn more about these specific things. This is a test that you will learn about when you go to you, test, you. That means just what it says. Your doctor didn't order it. You ordered it on yourself. That means your insurance is never going to pay for it. It's going to set you back about 150 bucks. But when you contact that website, you will know that they are pretty good at alerting you. Because I remember, I said there's had been a 600% increase in lung cancer. So wouldn't it be nice to know before you finally have a bad cough or you cough up some blood or <laughs> you're losing a lot of weight without reason, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to know? Because if you find these cancers in the early stage, these things, as I will show you in greater detail soon here, will bring these elevations of cancer growth back into safe ranges because your body can reverse early cancers it's just it's really hard after the cancer gets to the point where your doctor can see the lump of the bump because it has to be a certain size. We've done the chest x-rays. We have found in every case when we finally see that you have the cancer in your lung, if we get an old x-ray from a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, there it clearly was, but it was so small that we would not dare call it a lung cancer until it got to a certain size. So now you'll be able to know up front that you have something, and that is how I have shown with Dr. Kobayashi, working with him in Tokyo, that if you knew that you had a little too much cancer, everyone can turn it around. What do I mean by everybody? I mean 20,000 people followed for many years in the early stages before it's considered the lump or the bump which is the way we diagnose cancer in our country, he found that at this stage, we could have a 99% success rate at keeping patients from dying of cancer over a 10-year period. And this is the website where one can learn much, much more about Dr. Kobayashi's work. On my website, gordonresearch.com, it's got a little window where you can put in a word you want to search on, like mercury, or you want to put in a word like chelation, or a word like cancer. So if you use the word cancer, or you put in his name on my website, or even go to the Google. But on my website, I have his papers telling you what was the tricks that he used to make your early cancer test, which we have a couple of them here in America, I've just pointed out caprofile.net, and I've <clears throat> explained to you that you test you are early tests. But he has shown, and so he's the leader, because he was the one that realized we didn't need somebody giving you chemo radiation or surgery when we deal with the cancers in their early stages 
We needed to change your lifestyle and detox you. Some of you are going to have to get the whole program. And the whole program is using everything from heat, like a far infrared sauna, negative ion truth. Across the board, we know that all of the things, he simplified the diet. We use herbs as we are using today to give you immune support. And we use some massage. We always know massage is a great way to help the detoxification process. But he always suggested then that you lower the stress. He made you stop smoking or you couldn't win this fight because he was so sad. So many of the Japanese men, after we would bring their early cancer tests that were out of the safe range, back into a safe range, they would ask if they could go back to smoking. So the thing is that by age 74, one out of three Japanese people will have cancer and someone's going to pay $140,000 and yet 70% of them are just going to die. So what we're suggesting then is this, that if the programs I'm recommending to you, which are very expensive and I don't suggest that all of you can afford it, so let's take out of my program what you can afford to do. You could afford to exercise. That would be half an hour, five days a week would be a pretty good trick or the equivalent of riding a bike four miles a day. Uh, you know, there are different things you can do. But if you go back to Dr. Gordon's website and you really study, because I have spent hours putting my entire program on the website, one hour you watch FIGHT so you'll know what the F stands for, food, the I, infection, G, the genetics, so you'll have an overview. Then the next hour will be an hour on what food. How do you know if the food you eat is right for you? I assure you, if you're living in America, 99% of you are eating a food that is not right for you. And I'm not going to say it's easy to become a Sherlock Holmes. I have a great book written by Patrick Carlyle and it's called Medical Detective. Frankly, it's getting to that point. You're going to have to become a detective because you have to think for yourself. Your doctors, the few doctors that I can refer you to at achem.org or the functionalmedicine.com or the doctors at the American Academy of Environmental Medicine or even the anti-aging doctors, A4M, the few are going to be so busy that they can't really solve for you every aspect of the F and the I and the G. Because remember, if they're the world's expert on infection, that's all they talk about. The infection expert's not going to talk to you about mercury, and he's certainly never going to mention vitamin C because he's just interested in proving that we have these infections and they are part of the cancer picture. Or if he's the world's expert on toxins, that doesn't make him the world's expert on cancer. So what I have to do is have you become more knowledgeable. Now, the cheapest trick is to optimize your diet. And if you don't have a lot of money, then, then the cheapest trick is to realize that when I deal with complex people and I say to them, 40% of you absolutely probably will never be able to have gluten. And by the way, gluten is not just in wheat. It can be in rye. It's even found gluten now in soy, but it's tough. But anyhow, you can learn all this. But if I get you to understand that some people, the whole thing breaking their back is carrots because they actually have such a leaky gut and they are eating carrots so often that they become sensitive to it. And the carrot is blocking their body's ability to work normally because it's become an enemy. So food can become an enemy, yet food can be your medicine. So how can we solve that? Well, if, if I have you eat foods you haven't eaten for six months, I've got a pretty good chance that you're not allergic or addicted to it. If I start with rutabagas or triticale or amaranth or quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A, you've never spelled it, but it kept the Inca civilization alive. So the more I break you break out of your mold, but when I teach you a new food, that doesn't mean you can eat rutabagas every day because then you'll become leaky because it takes a long time for me to heal your gut. So why do I have to heal your gut to talk about cancer? I have to heal your gut because if you're eating a food you're sensitive to, your immune system is chasing that food. It could be milk. And you get, I mean, I'm from Wisconsin. I have to tell a Wisconsinite that they can't have cheese. That's a death sentence. They're never going to come back to see me again unless they really want to live. 
So do we have the right test to tell you for sure which food's killing you? Well, yes, we have some. S-A-G-E. You can pull it up on, on Google or Alcat, A-L-C-A-T, or ELISA. There are many different tests, IgG testing and IgE, and it, it, all of them can cost a thousand bucks, and all of them are helpful, but some people just actually buy a book called The Pulse Test by Coco, who's head of the Department of Allergy at Tomura University School of Medicine, and they find out the pulse goes up when they eat a single food, more than 10% that they better not keep eating that food. So vitamin C has been a small miracle. And we actually know now that high-dose vitamin C is actually being used now increasingly around the world. There will be a conference coming up October 8th and 9th in Wichita at the Raven Center, which is a leading center treating all forms of serious cancer with vitamin C-based programs. And so it's really good to know that Mark Levine at NIH was able to find that he could show that all of the tumor uh, that we have on tissue studies, every cancer definitely responds to vitamin C. And we think that part of that mechanism of response of vitamin C, killing a tumor, is through a pro-oxidant. What does that mean? It means that we're taking, remember, these cancer cells love to be in an anaerobic environment. They love to be where there wasn't much oxygen, and now you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're using something high level oxygen because H2O2 will break down and release an oxygen, so you've taken that poor tumor that didn't want to be around oxygen, and you've bloated with oxygen. <clears throat> so it turns out that when I give you vitamin C in your vein, it will go into your body in huge quantities, whereas when I put it in your mouth, I have got the pleasure of having introduced the most powerful and unfortunately the most expensive form of oral vitamin C on the market, bioenergy C. But why did I have to have the most expensive? Because what I'm trying to do is we can't all afford to go to a doctor every day and get it in the vein. So I've been able to get a form of vitamin C that combines things like methyl sulfonylmethane, trimethyl glycine, ribose, some tricks that we've done to it. So it's a vitamin C delivery system. So I am getting results. The leading cancer clinics are using our oral vitamin C to help all cancer patients, whatever the kind of cancer it is, survive much longer. I didn't say cure. I said survive much longer. But if patients have a lot of funds and you find more and more doctors will come to our International Cancer Conference about October 8th and 9th in Wichita and learn more about how to give vitamin C. This is a great thing because this is 100% absorbed and even though I have the best absorbed, documented, highest levels with an oral, I still don't ever want to claim that I can do everything that this thing will do. But I have to get the point across that that the miraculous thing is that cancer cells love sugar, which is why your diet has to change. Because we're sugar holics in this whole country. So you're going to eat vegetables. You're going to learn to change the diet. But when I use the vitamin C, the cancer cell probably has a receptor on the cancer cell to be sure that if there's any sugar in its vicinity, it will soak it up. And guess what? It thinks vitamin C is sugar because actually if you go back in time, we once had an enzyme called l galanolactone and we've lost the gene and we could convert as the animals of the earth do, we could convert glucose, sugar, into vitamin C. And that really makes a very strong statement. You don't have the ability, so you have to take and buy it. But it's part of my cost of staying alive. Linus Pauling taught me all this, and I have been a devotee of his all these many years at age 75. I am telling you, my body is functioning better than it did at 55 and actually better than it did at 25. And many people looking at me say, gee, you certainly don't look 75. Part of it is I won't go more than 12 hours without vitamin C. And the cancer patients in the living cancer clinics around the world who start on a program 
to lower the total body burden and get healthier and stay on the bioenergy C and put the bioenergy C and swallow it. They never go more than every eight hours. They have it morning, noon, and night. And if they take a whole slightly heaping teaspoon of bioenergy C, they will have a C test, a vitamin C test in the urine that will prove that they're in highly safe range. So we've known at NIH that high doses of injected vitamin C, repeat, that's 100% absorbed, will actually reduce tumor weight and growth by about 50%. So when they give you these phony drugs that they push at you, in like a Bastin, which is the most phony of them all, and, 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 and now they're going to finally have FDA take away that stupid approval they gave that. But that's what should happen to the entire chemo. Everything that's going on with the chemo across the board, with the exception of the testicular tumors that respond like Lance Armstrong and some of the acute leukemias in children, most of what the doctors are doing is not telling you the whole story. I wish that you could walk into your doctor with a tape recorder and say, Doctor, would you tell me the exact details? Why are you suggesting chemo for my wife's little lump that they took out? What is the advantage? What is the documentation? What is the proof? What do we expect? And so, unfortunately, that's the way I practice medicine, and I don't do any consultations without turning on the tape recorder and then sending the discussion we have to you so you can play it again and understand it. But this is the link, and this is the guy, Mark Levine. He actually set out to prove that vitamin C was nonsense and couldn't help cancer, and when he saw what really happened at NIH, but no one at NIH will allow them to set up any studies to prove that this is the actual treatment you should be getting. No one's going to allow that because they are so much in bed with the FDA and the drug companies that they will not let people know that there's an easy answer that everyone would benefit from, whether it's pancreatic or glioblastoma. It's so sad that everybody is not getting the whole story. But we wanted to start this program with not treatment, with, with prevention. But if it's actually able to treat, then it might tell you that since I've told you, you all have cancer all the time, then it's not a waste of time for you to learn what I've just told you. That if you are already at the serious stage that it's in your brain, it's in your lung, it's in your liver, and they've told you you have two months to live, the two months could become two years or longer. And we have many miraculous stories. But it is tied to vitamin C and other things that we're going to take. Because remember, if you've already been told you have cancer, it means that you've never figured out what food you should be eating, so your immune system wasn't, you never learned about what toxins were in your body. You didn't know anything about how to get the lead and mercury out. Remember, everybody born on Earth is born with an average of a 1,000 times more lead than anybody a few hundred years ago. And EPA agrees 600,000 children are born with mercury poisoning. Nobody treats it. So do you think that if you're born with lead and mercury, do you think it might be wise to get it out so your body has a chance of living on a toxic planet with the world's worst food supply that has ever existed. The food that we eat is a massive experiment, and you've got to be on omega-3. You've got to learn to get iodine. You've got to take the vitamin D. You've got to do these things because you don't stand a chance. And it's part of the cost of staying alive. And a lot of us can't afford all of this. So the cheapest thing I can do is have you take out of the FIGHD the parts you can do. You can afford to sweat. You can afford to make sure that you get a diet that has something that's raised by somebody you know, and you can afford to not eat wheat every day and have a milk product going in your face every day, because that's just the top of the tip of the iceberg. I admit that there's some people, I said, could be any food helping break your back, even a carrot, but that's really only trying to wake you up. But if you look at this, the bras, take them off the minute you get home. The underwire is not safe. Pitching pitch black, well, yeah, that's because I take the melatonin. I buy it. It's cheap at the health food store. Broccoli, it's, it's critical. You need to be on it. And anybody can cut down the wine. Alcohol is beneficial if you're talking about a couple glasses of wine. But it's, it's hard for people to keep in the thing. Everyone's going to have to get up away from the sitting in front of the couch with the remote control. We all have to move around. If you don't think you can move around and 
pick up a dog at the pound and you walk the dog because you all of us seem to respect the need for our dog to have exercise. So everybody lives longer who has a dog because they feel guilty if they don't walk the dog and the dog pushes you to get off the couch. And so you don't want the breast implants. We need to lower stress. It's a key part of all this. We have to have positive thinking. We need to do some cleansing of the liver, which is why everybody's on Dr. Gordon's, you know, handy dandy power drink. Because in there you have the maca, which is the glucosinolate, which is doing much of what broccoli does, but I still want you to get the broccoli in addition. But in addition to that, maca can make you have healthier levels of other hormones so that you may actually feel sexy once in a while, which is good because people who feel good enough to be sexually active always live longer. And brushing the skin is kind of like massaging. And the soy that I approve of has to really be fermented. I do not like soy that is not fermented. But fortunately, you might be able to find some organic, but I am really opposed to genetically modified food, and so much of the soy in our country has been genetically modified. So we need to make the point very clear that there is some benefit, particularly in Japan, where we have people eating fermented soy daily. But in our country, if you look at the nurses' study, the soy that most of us are eating actually was associated with a serious increase in the incidence of Alzheimer's. So it's tough to imagine that a food can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you do. So if you happen to know that the food that you are dealing with is organic, and if you then actually ferment it, as in tempeh or in uh, miso soup, etc., you win. Now, across the board, I teach anti-aging, and I can't have you reach 90 unless you get there with strong bones and soft arteries. And I can't win that fight unless I have every woman from the time she starts getting close to menopause learn that the herbal remedy from Thailand, HRT is herbal remedy from Thailand. Now, you can use this with bioidentical hormone therapy if you feel that you need it. But so many women, if you'll take two of these <coughs> HRT a day, will be able to get rid of the vaginal dryness, the insomnia, the depression, the loss of memory, and even stop the loss of calcium from your bones, which remember, at the time of menopause, we find women getting a little problem called hypertension. Why do they get hypertension at that age? Because when you don't have something like HRT to replace the fact that you're no longer making your own levels of natural estrogen, your bones start to melt. When your bones are melting, the bad news is that the calcium leaves the bone and goes to the artery and starts to make the arteries hard because if you look at any x-ray of any 70-year-old person, you can see outlined coming out of the heart, the aorta, and it's all outlined with calcium. So I've got to have you on this and vitamin K2. This is a must, but you don't want all the calcium. They've been lying to people telling you, take 1,300, 1,500, 2,000 calcium. The latest study in British Medical Journal two weeks ago, shows that taking large amounts of calcium is increasing heart disease, and that's because I've taught everyone that you only need enough calcium supplements, namely 500 milligrams, that you get when you take PCI twice a day, to be able to offset the high phosphorus in your diet, but you always will need the vitamin D. Now, when your doctor shakes his head and says, we've done all we can do, there's nothing more we can do, Try to remember the magic words. Tom Ruby is a cardiologist attorney, but he put 1,200 references into this book so that you would really know that if you get C at high doses, it actually cures life-threatening infections. And I told you, every cancer has an infection as part of it, but it also neutralizes the other toxins. And we try to tell you, that if you go to 10americans.com, you will read what is in your baby, what's in your kid that is having trouble learning. He doesn't have a Ritalin deficiency. And it will explain a lot of things to you. And Emmanuel Sharaskin, who was my mentor, helped me really understand early on that vitamin C is such a key part of our winning 
the war against a toxic America and watch CNN on my website and please watch the two separate one hours so that you know what you're fighting because then you're down to a simple decision. Can you afford not to take something as practical as zeolite? which is proven in animals to reduce birth defects. So if it's your daughter, don't let her go through a pregnancy with the knowledge that we now have that whatever toxin is in her mouth, if she's eating fish every day or whatever, or she's been smoking or across the board she has a mouthful of work, we can't live on the earth without having toxins as you'll see in the CNN special in your home. The home is so toxic they tell you to open the windows because it's four times more toxic than the outdoors is. From the formaldehyde and the carpets and the cabinets, it's so frightening. This story, the real story, will make you mad because these highly qualified scientists have tried to, to change things in this country because they have lied, 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 telling you how much vitamin C you need. The light of level of vitamin C they told you need is only enough to prevent scurvy. It is so sad if they're not telling you the true story of all the things vitamin C can help you prevent when it helps put the fires out in your body. And we all need to know that Bioenergy C is a unique delivery system for vitamin C that one teaspoon three times a day <clears throat> will slow your aging, will help you detoxify, do wonderful things, but it takes the zeolite, which has with it the glutathione, the humic acid, and has in it the all our lipoic acid that is shown now to save people's liver. Even if somebody has had mushroom pointing, they're going to die in hours if somebody comes in and gives them the all our lipoic acid that's part of the zeogold. One capsule of this every day in your life is going to have a dramatic difference in how many toxins are in every part of your body that later is subject to you being told, gee, I'm sorry you've got lung cancer, I'm sorry you've got cancer in your liver, I'm sorry you've got cancer in your bone, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you need to do something about it. So Bioenergy C is something you can do about it, and it has in it the special ribose and what we would simply explain is trimethylglycine and methylcephalomethane. Why am I emphasizing the word methyl? <coughs> because all of you have at least 10,000 times more phthalates because we've been protecting ourselves, we thought, drinking our water out of plastic bottles, which gave you bisphenol A, and bisphenol A changes your genes so you no longer methylate, and if you can't methylate, you don't get toxins out of your body. So that's one of the reasons this product has a 30% higher level of C in the people than otherwise achievable because of the addition of methylation, and that's why I have you take Beyond B12, which is a methyl form of cobalamin with the active forms of folic acid, but the list goes on. It's a little frightening to realize how many things I take, but it's a lot of good news to know that I'm not waiting for somebody to come along with some magic breakthrough and stem cell research. I'm getting younger every month because I am applying my FIGHT program, and you watch an hour on genetics, an hour on heavy metals, an hour on hormones, an hour on toxins, and you'll come back and say, I want my urine stick test, little stick. And you take that little stick, and it has a green color when you take it out of the jar, and you wet it with the urine, and if it doesn't instantly go to there, you are not going to have the bright future I could have you have because they've shown that the patients who stay at this level of excretion in the urine wouldn't have it high in the urine unless it was high in the blood. And if it's high in the blood, it's really concentrating in the cells of cancer in your body. So zeogold, there is not a zeolite in the world like it. You can watch on my special website zeoliteanswer.com, what regular zeolite has been known to do, and we're treating cancer in Europe with a zeolite from Croatia, and they're doing lots of research with even Harvard Medical School to prove that when you get zeolite in the intestine, the intestine then is no longer poisoning you, because otherwise, if you don't tie up the bad stuff that gets into our water and food in there, 
then your body's fighting that fight. If I just put some zeolite in your intestine every day, then you will not be wasting the body's glutathione powers trying to fight the toxins that come because of the mixtures of preservatives and bad things in our food. And we can prove this because when we use even cheap animal-grade zeolite, we cut down on birth defects dramatically, and we cut down on the development of cancer in animals, and we even get rid of the ammonia smell in a chicken or a pig farm. Now, I love oxygen, and I'm teaching all of you that there was a trick that we've done here. If you lived in Germany or Russia, we would treat your cancers routinely with ozone. And I might even use a hyperbaric chamber, or I might even give you intravenous hydrogen peroxide. But when I give you vitamin C, I'm giving you what your body will convert into hydrogen peroxide, which is one of the exciting forms of oxygen healing therapy. So understand that you may not be able to find many doctors. We have a few in this country who have really studied extensively overseas, and they know all about how to use ozone. And we have licenses in Nevada and, and in Arizona so that we have our homeopaths in our state are actually doing these kinds of therapies. But they're not widely available to everybody listening to us today. But here's a gentleman who really studied herbal answers to cancer. In his book, Herbal Medicine, Healing, and Cancer is heavily referenced by Donald R. Vance, and it's exciting to know that he lays out his protocols and brings to the table the specific things, whether it's agaricus or whether you learn about artemisinin. We have many things, but since a lot of us can't afford all of these things, it's nice to know that David Surveyne, Schreiber, MD, PhD, is a professor of psychiatry at the University of Pittsburgh Medical School, but he's a 17-year survivor of brain cancer who initially took standard therapy, i.e. surgery, radiation, and the tumor, of course, came back. So he thought, I'd better get into this a little more deep. So in his new book this year, which you need to own, this is a good book, there's a thousand references, and he tells you which of the foods that have the most likelihood of helping you get rid of cancers and across the board that's going to be a lot of things like, for example, we know that if you get curcumin, if you go to curcumin, which was in the curry when you eat Indian food, curcumin and cancer, you search those two words on the Google, and you, if you're really worried because you have a lot of arthritis and back pain and sore joints and whatever, you're going to take curcumin because you're going to learn that it's also going to help you not have cancer. But you're also going to learn more about how to raise your own body's detoxification powers. And I said to you, go to my website, Gordon Research, and put in the word Kobayashi, and you can read the whole program that kept 10,000 patients 10 years in Tokyo from dying of cancer. You want to more, learn more of the details. But we live in a time frame that we now know that wine drinking is explaining some of the French paradox. So I take resveratrol, and it absolutely helps your telomeres, slows the aging. So I take resveratrol twice a day. And I'm taking every day curcumin, one capsule a day. And I'm taking the all our lipoic acid. I'm getting it in addition to the two capsules a day that I take of zero gold. I'm taking another 100 milligram because all our lipoic acid has been shown by Les Becker and Bruce Ames, the leading biochemists of our time, in a full-page ad that you can see in Scientific American to slow the rate of aging of your mitochondria. Who cares if my mitochondria age? Well, mitochondria are what convert your glucose and oxygen into energy, and they are a key, key part of you being able to have the energy to fight all the toxins that wind up finally with your immune system giving up the fight. But we've been able to show that we can help restore immune system functioning when I neutralize the toxins. And so that's what I've mentioned to you about things like zeolite and oral chelation. So everybody I treat is always on BCI because you've got to have the omega-3. And you're going to have to learn more about how to fight back about the fluorine in our diet. 
in the bromine that's in the polybrominated diphenyl ethers, the flame retardant that's loaded in every person on earth today means that your thyroid isn't working optimally because you need more iodine, so get help. 500 milligram, I mean, across the board, but I have to have you support your methylation because you've got the bisphenol A and phthalates, which have made your body not methylate, and methylation is one step, like sulfate and acetylation, that helps your body move toxins out, and I told you no one has ever passed the test at Mount Sinai School of Medicine for $4,900. We all fail. If you're Bill Moyer on television or you're Jim Lerner, head of a Commonweal Natural Cancer Research Organic Institute, he's loaded. You can't rebreathe, you're going to need these things. So I want you to know whether you use daily immune support or if you use aura immune across the board, I need to have people know that my power drink, all of these things are available. Those who want to know exactly what I take, it's on the website and you can see it. But Sam Epstein is a brilliant scientist in the University of Chicago. He's been on the floor of the House of Congress telling everybody how dangerous what we've been doing to us. And Suzanne Summers has been lied to two years ago. They had widespread cancer through her body, had to go on total body chemo immediately. And she said, I just won't do it. And, of course, it turned out that she had an infection called coccidiomycosis or valley fever. It wasn't cancer at all. So this is a tough world to survive in. When she had five doctors in a leading Los Angeles-based hospital, five doctors in her room saying, you have widespread cancer, there's no question about it, throughout your body, you're in the late stages, you have months to live. That's what her book is about. So you know on my website that you can listen to the interviews with Pastor Ann, and you can also learn that I have an additional website, Fight for Your Health, where I'm beginning to take some of the powerful information I share with 2,600 doctors, 2,600 health professionals, including your doctor, can learn from me at no charge when he goes to my website and scrolls down and says, join FACT if you're a health professional, and there he sees how I treat prostate and breast cancer and pancreatic cancer and all this stuff. Or I'm starting to move the fact, which is the forum on anti-aging inflammation, I'm moving it over to the fight so that finally I'll have more and more of the same information I share with doctors cleaned up and made less technically usable to the public. But I have a great place if you go to fightforyourhealth.com, but there's another one, linebook.com forward slash fight, and there you will see a really great nurse who's been a private investigator who's been fighting cancer as well as Lyme disease as well as multiple sclerosis is willing to help answer your questions so that my book detox and oral will become more understandable because everyone's going to have questions. If you go to Zeolite Answer, I just show you what has been known historically around the world. It's volcanic material. We happen to have found a zeolite that no one has ever had that has 20 times the power of any other zeolite. So we're very confident that we can make everybody listening to us today to have a long and healthy life, and we can clearly reduce your chance of ever dying of cancer by 99% if you choose to believe the research by Kobayashi and if you choose to become involved before you're fighting a lump or bump. I thank you for your attention, and let's see if there have been any questions typed in that we need to address, and I'll be doing a conference call in at 4 o'clock that will be a little less than two hours that will be on diabetes where we answer questions for the public because Diabetes is epidemic. We all have di disorders of glucose metabolism. We all are living on a toxic planet, and the more I can make you healthy, whether I get you cinnamon or I get you on other tricks like the right diet and choosing the right food so you have normal blood sugars, the less cancer you'll have. Thank you for your attention today. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. We encourage you to browse Dr. Gordon's website, which is www.gordonresearch.com. The products that Dr. Gordon has formulated are available through Longevity Plus. We would like to inform you that if you sign up for a monthly auto ship on Dr. Gordon's Beyond Chelation Improved multivitamin packs, you will receive 20% off for the next 12 months. Please visit our website at www.longevityplus.com 
or call 800-580-7587 to place your order and receive your special auto ship discount. Dr. Gordon will be hosting a conference call today at 4 p.m. Pacific time. That conference call number is 760-569-7676. Please enter the access code 687540. We value all of you and thank you for joining us.